people. It's July 17th. This is the BAM Weekly Muni Market Update. I'm here with Grant Dewey and Brian Babler from BAM's Capital Markets Desk. Thanks, gentlemen, for being here. Uh, Grant, let's talk to you and talk about the markets after weeks of uh, really very stable yields. This week, they trended down somewhat. What was driving that? I think, uh, you know, we saw headline initial unemployment uh, claims, Mike. They fell 1.3 million for the latest week, so continued its kind of gradual trend uh, lower. But the non-seasonally adjusted numbers rose by 100,000. So that's the first increase that we've seen since uh, the middle of March. So I think that data point uh, coincides with the surge in COVID cases nationally. And uh, so the 10-year Treasury is down to about a, uh, 61 basis points, which is really, or 62 basis points, just about five basis points off the historic lows from uh, on March 9th. So um, I think that, you know, it's consistent with an economic rebound that seems to be moderating. And uh, so I think that has kind of been a lot of the impact. So uh, it's been in a tight trading range, as you said, but we're at the lower range now. And a lot of questions as people see the expiration of some of the stimulus uh, provisions that were put into law yeah. earlier this spring. They're coming up the next couple of weeks. Congress has not yet acted on a new stimulus package. So there's probably some questions there right. too. Absolutely. So state and local governments, you know, they'll start to learn next week what the Senate uh, has in mind for the next round. Um, we all remember the House has proposed a trillion. I'm hearing even higher numbers than that uh, a few weeks back uh, prior to the recess. But, um, you know, obviously that will uh, that'll be an important uh, marker as we see what develops there. Um, you know, for their part, Moody's issued a reassuring forecast for bondholders and 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 bond insurers, actually. Um, it doesn't expect the pandemic to cause much, uh, if any, defaults this year. So it cited sort of the classic structural strengths of muni geos and, and revenue bonds and, and also referenced kind of the, you know, strong balance sheets that, um, that have been created, you know, after the years of economic growth just prior to the, to the, uh, to the pandemic. So, um, so all in all, the market is, remains very issuer friendly. Um, you know, we, uh, we did have a strong week in the secondary this week, um, doing uh, about 40 million uh, in the secondary market. Uh, Brian will get into this, but um, we did some University of Illinois, there continues to be a lot of uh, university debt that comes to market. Um, and, uh, and Brian will get into that, but overall a good week. Great. And so, Brian, as, uh, as Grant said, we did see a lot of uh, new issue activity. Investor issuers certainly taking advantage of this low interest rate environment to uh, get their transactions into market. Uh, what kind of trends did you see? Yeah, Grant uh, hit the nail on the head. Issuer friendly market environment for sure. Uh, going into the week, the expected supply was around 14 billion or so. It ended up finishing around 15 and a half billion with uh, some additional deals coming into the market, a few getting upsized. Uh, and really, most of that supply being extremely well received, um, it was broad based across the board. There were some, uh, there were definitely some big chunky deals that took up a lot of the volume, uh, but over 12 billion on negotiated, three and a half billion uh, on the competitive side. Uh, as usual, you know, we continue to see taxable supply, um, you know, with over five billion price this week. Um, so, you know really buyers were kind of all over everything that came to market. Um, uh, on an example, uh, Port Authority, New York, New Jersey was upsized. Um, DFW Airport, uh, which came for the first time in about three years as a non-AMT deal, uh, was about 26 times oversubscribed with over 3.3 billion uh, in orders. So, uh, you know, buyers were looking for, uh, for any of the paper that they could get their hands on. Um, overall, uh, BAM had a very strong week. We priced over 360 million in transactions. Uh, some of the highlights there were 75 million for Hillsdale uh, School District COPs in Ohio. Uh, those were priced by Stiefel. Uh, Citigroup priced uh, a deal for Rowan University and used BAM on about 60 million in par. Uh, they also insured a double A minus uh, Woodbridge, New Jersey Board of Ed deal in the competitive market. Uh, and then in Colorado, um, which, uh, you know, which is a, a name, uh, a state that doesn't uh, use a ton of insurance, uh, BAM was used uh, on 45 million Firestone uh, waters at Stiefel Price this week. So overall, you know, really robust week um, up and down across credit spectrum uh, and across ratings.
And really continuing to see that trend of investor discernment, right? People, uh, you know, the higher grade names are getting a lot of att attention uh, as, as well as insured paper. Uh, lower grade names, still uh, some uncertainty among investors are not necessarily willing to commit uh, given the economic outlook. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, and Grant mentioned earlier um, secondary trade on University of Illinois, uh, again, on the heels of the Rowan uh, transaction pricing in the new issue market. Uh, there were still uh, some balances hanging around from a competitive sale a couple of weeks ago for the University of Illinois, uh, and a, a buyer ended up coming in uh, and wrapping uh, the long end of some of those balances, most of the fours, um, and cleaned those up. It was about $27 million in total. So, um, you know, between that uh, continued interest uh, on the DASNY uh, dorm pit, uh, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. DASNY SUNY dorm deal, uh, that price this week, which came uninsured and is getting some secondary interest, uh, also uh, balances on uh, Wichita State University. Um, you know, sectors like higher ed uh, are definitely getting uh, definitely getting some attention for the added liquidity that insurance provides. And so in that context, Brian, uh, let's take a quick look at the uh, calendar for next week. Not as uh, large a calendar as we saw priced this week, but still a lot of uh, BAM activity as well as activity in the broader market. What are you watching? Yeah, next week will uh, slow down a little bit uh, on the total volume side. It market's only expecting around $9 billion or so, so a little bit of a downtick there. But, uh, but it'll still be uh, pretty active, um, $6.6 .6 billion on the negotiated side, about 2 and a half or so on the competitive. Around a billion of that is uh, Maryland Geo that's going to be taking up a lot of everybody's attention. Um, but uh, BAM's got a, a very busy week planned uh, next week with over 250, almost 300 million in deals set to price. Uh, some of those include Spanish Fork uh, Sewer District in Utah. That's going to sell competitively with BAM insurance. Um, there's yeah, also there for a second, Brian, that's a BAM Green Star issue too. That's a green bond. Uh, Spanish Fork is uh, rebuilding their wastewater treatment plant to comply with upcoming new uh, state regulations. And so it's a, it's a big capital program and a good uh, green bond opportunity for ESG focused investors. Excellent. Um, away from that, uh, some, some other larger transactions, 53 million for, uh, for Oyster Bay in New York will be priced by Oppenheimer. Uh, about 41 million uh, for Jefferson Union uh, High School District in California will be priced by RBC, and about 34 million of Hamden, Connecticut, is going to be priced by Raymond James. So, uh, very active week for BAM expected, uh, and we've got a lot of competitive sales that we'll be putting uh, putting prices on. And both the Spanish Fork and Jefferson uh, transactions are highlighted with uh, BAM Credit Insights videos. So uh, after you're done with this video, stick around and check out the rest of our YouTube page uh, for more information on next week's deals. Thanks, gentlemen. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. When the market is unpredictable, BAM gives you certainty. In the face of market volatility and illiquidity, BAM insured municipal bonds deliver default protection, value preservation, and a durable AA rating from S&P. BAM's insurance protects against everything that causes a default, including natural disasters, financial fraud, pension issues, and economic disruption. So while America rebuilds, BAM has you covered. BAM. Build America Mutual. Talk to your investment advisor or visit buildamerica.com.